some of the suppliers couldn't cope with it because they also had uh, cash flow issues and they also had to honor their payments to their international distributors. So some of them had started requesting um, payments up front in cash for delivery. Uh, others have requested uh, aged invoices to be paid. Um, it was strange because we also saw that suppliers came to us and asked for our help in closing our bills rather than us going to them and asking them uh, to help us uh, by fronting up some, some of the products. So I think this was the key impact. Thing, things changed and uh, we just had to uh, manage the entire ecosystem together. So there wasn't a one set solution that we could work with. Every supplier was a case in point, and we had to tackle it by case uh, and uh, be aware of everyone's cash flow and everyone's situation in this particular period. And we had to support each other in order to survive and come out the other side of this pandemic stronger and still together. Uh, the supply chain globally uh, been affected badly because of most of the, as a producer, as a manufacturer, uh, most of the company or most of the manufacturer used to lie only in one source or more than 70% of their business was lying from one source from uh, China and Asia and that affects uh, the whole business. So now as a company or as a global start to look for after the pandemic what we should do and they start to, to talk about three things. First, resilient become very priority for every company and every manufacturer that is not only the price, the quality, also the accessibility and the resilience of moving the product. Second, they always have to, should have model for comprehensive proactive in case something happened, how we could react or act. And third one is the digital transformation. Everybody talking about how we can do make our business more uh, efficient in terms of cost and, and, and time. Back to the end point, it's obvious that nobody will survive alone. Collaboration is the key between supplier, customer, and end user as well. Everybody should play a part for uh, during this time, this situation, so we can all fast surviving. What, what we noticed or uh, what we we uh, seen in the past few months is uh, the priority now is for short term. Everybody would like to work on what he need immediately. Uh, considering we are a producer for machinery and manufacturing products, so now uh, most of the institution, hotel, restaurant, hospital, whatever, they look for the immediate need or for short term planning. To, to, to save or to uh, to support their uh, plan for the next three to six months. And this will affect for long-term long business as well, because mm. I think after the pandemic, most of institution, their plan or their vision will be six, six months, one year. No, not anymore, three to five years planning. This how we see now what we noticed in the past few months during this pandemic. When the hotel side of the business actually closed down, um, we all of a sudden had inventory that we had planned for ahead of time. Uh, we're like, okay, let's make sure that we've got enough inventory before the borders close, right? So we took in all of this inventory, we prepared it, uh, and then all of a sudden all of the hotels closed down and all of the restaurants and everybody that was going outside to eat. And, uh, and it's not that they didn't want product. It wasn't relevant for them to carry it or stock it. Um, so we were playing kind of cat and mouse and it was catch 22. We were trying to figure out uh, our min max level for everything down from our wood all the way up to our spices. Um, uh, and we wanted to make sure that when things picked back up, uh, the next container that came in of whatever it is that we were importing wasn't triple or quadruple the price. So do we buy six months ahead of time and expose ourselves to that credit, uh, knowing that the uptake is probably going to be slower, right? 
uh, and pr or probably could be non-existent. We were trying to predict well ahead of time um, what to buy so we would be able to sell, not to run out, but also not to expose ourselves financially to product that we wouldn't be able to sell. We have many suppliers who work with and we have volume, right? We, we, we buy a lot. And it's very important to negotiate in the right way. Now, how to negotiate? There are tons of books and podcasts and audiobooks written on the subject. So before delving in, because we're just going to cover literally the very, uh, very top of the iceberg, I would suggest if you are interested in negotiation to find a, an appropriate book, I would recommend a book called um, Never Split the Difference. So that's Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Amazing audiobook, or you can read it. Uh, that goes into the whole art of negotiation. Uh, now, just to go back and explain to you what has worked for us is the following. I think I, I cannot stress how important it is to meet people face to face or through Zoom video now if you can't meet them face to face. Any negotiation or communication between humans is 7% is content of the con uh, of the of the conversation. Thirty-eight percent is your tone or tone of voice, so you can talk slowly and clearly, or you can talk fast and agitated. Fifty-five percent is your body language and your face. So fifty-five percent of communication is body language and face. So it's very important to meet the people you're working with if you want to get what you want. So that's the first thing I would say. If the negotiation is important to you, meet the person. That's the first rule. Second one is to know exactly what you want. If your supplier offers you something at, let's say, 100 dirham per unit, as an example, you need to know what you're going to ask for. You can't just say, give me a discount. That's lazy and that doesn't work and unfortunately that's what most people do. They say, no, too expensive, do you have a discount? What can you offer me? So I think that's the wrong approach. I think what you need to do is understand, do some research in the market, see what similar products are being sold for, look at your numbers. How does that per particular product impact your business? If it's a high volume item, then it will have a big impact on your numbers. If it's a low volume item, then it won't have that much impact on your PL. So use your negotiation equity where it matters most. Everybody needs the best product and best solution at the best price. I think uh, real successful negotiation or when both parties or all the parties in this negotiation win. And maybe I discuss this uh, when all was offline, it's win win. I mean, a supplier or customer will never work again unless they feel they, they have value for what they get. And also, they, we have to understand the difference between value and price. It's not always is the price. What, what's your, what is the value your money can buy? So, uh, back to the ad about the books and the always is one point we should all of us agree about it is if you win and I provide you the best product, you are coming back to do business with me. But if you take the best price, but I didn't give you the best product, most probably will not do business again. So it's always about what as a customer, what I need and also I have to understand exactly what I need and set my priorities. I can first my priority is this point and then second priority is this point. So I always uh, have enough information to, to share it with the supplier and also priorities. I can live with that, but I cannot live without that. Once the negotiation ends with both parties are winning, uh, I think it will be good relation and uh, so, negotiation for next deal or the future deal, it will be much easier. So uh, winning, post-party winning and sharing informations and priorities 
for both parties are very important. Uh, a pastrami that we make takes 14 days to make. So when you're talking about a, a product that takes 14 days to make, you're not going to find that on the shelf unless you import it. So would you rather work with a supplier that you can speak to, see, meet uh, here in the region or deal with an importer and obviously with uh, the, the, the pandemic, uh, the logistics, are you air freighting? Uh, is it consistent? Is it always going to be the same product? So we've had both sides of the conversation um, where in one situation we had a great relationship with our meat importer, but because some of our grain fed US beef came from uh, the, the South, the, the Midwest, everything that was coming out of the US shut down. They closed the borders. And so the next container that was coming out was actually double the price per kilo of meat, if you can imagine. That has nothing to do with whether the guy liked us, whether we liked them, whether we'd met them, body language, or anything of the sort. It was just the, the, the nature of the business, supply and demand. There was so much demand and not enough US grain fed beef to go around that we had to uh, readjust actually uh, our supplier relationship. Not because we didn't like them, not because we didn't know uh, how to handle them as people or their emotions, but sometimes there is, um, if you'll pardon the pun, you'll have to, the, the meat and potatoes of supply and demand sometimes factors in more to the conversation than uh, your relationship with the client. You can like somebody as much as you want, but the price of gold globally is set at this per gram. Do you know what I mean? So we've done both sides of the, of the coin uh, and it boils down to uh, the value proposition that you have for the product that you're purchasing and that translates into the value, uh, the value proposition for the product that you're selling.